definitely rather do a mountain climb on a bike yeah, I wouldn't change when I'd definitely you, no. rather fight, <laughs> fight a big know, fella. Trying to get out of the council state like in the early 90s was quite a challenge. It was. <laughs> well, be, you're more than welcome to get in the gym anytime you want, lad. You know that. I've got a bike, but it's a mountain bike and it's got an engine in. Let's just go back then to sort of the beginning of your careers and stuff and just sort of let's talk about like early motivations and what kind of made you want to get into the careers that you've gotten into have a little bit of discussion over that obviously mm. two very different things but at the same time competing at the highest level it's always that easy for me to answer oh, yeah, i started training when i was 15 you know what i mean and then started fighting i was 16 must be hard for you can you remember the first time <laughs> you jumped on a bike yeah, I, can. <laughs> yeah. I can yeah i was 13 well 12 actually <clears throat> i was playing football at uh, west ham youth team at the time and uh it was 1992 I came home. My dad was a professional cyclist, you see. He came over from Australia in the 70s, but he left home when I was one and a half, so I didn't meet him again until I was 19. Um, but I was always grown up aware that he was a cyclist. My mum always informed me about him. Um, so he grew up. I grew up with him as my hero, even though I didn't own a dad um, or this sort of vision I had of, of a dad, you know. And um, uh, I came home from uh, playing football one summer in 1992, and the Olympics was on in Barcelona. I remember th watching this thing, because it was only three and a half minutes, this event on the Olympics. Liv for Christie won the night before in the 100 metres. Sally Gunnell, of course, we all had, um, you know, athlete. athletics was like, every, every kid was into athletics as a kid. And um, he won the gold medal, and I remember thinking, God, I'd love to do that one day. But the Olympics was massive for me as a kid. It was like an institution, the Olympic Games. Yeah. Because that was when we were shit at sport. We didn't win many Olympic gold medals then. Now we've got so many gold medalists. Um, but it was an institution every four years, you know, the Olympic Games. And um, I always wanted to go to the Olympics. I grew up on a council state in London, institutionalised to violence, quite a rough area. And um, you either became a footballer or a boxer where I grew up. And so it was um, cycling, you know, cyclists trying to get out of a council state in Lycra in the early 90s was quite a challenge. <laughs> it was. You know, it was. It was It was a real... <laughs> Getting the back ripped out of you. Yeah, no, but it, was, it wasn't like it is now, you know. It's, like, it's now acceptable, maybe not in Liverpool, but it is acceptable. <laughs> you know, it's, it's become a... <laughs> a lot sort of you know it's become sort of a, an underlying national sport in many ways you know you see the cyclists on the road at the weekends but um you know it was difficult but i was very ambitious and you know, i always knew the difference between right and wrong you know i kind of drifted away from the gangs and sort of crime and petty crime and things like that in the area that i lived in and i always wanted to be ambitious and um do something with my life and um yeah the olympics was like the one that fucking started it for me really that was the catalyst for for what i wanted to do and it's never left me really and I was fortunate enough to go to five Olympic Games, win five Olympic gold medals, and um, that was every four years was was something I'd... Uh, you know, it's lucky, it's, it's different for you. You've got to fight every couple of months or whatever. The Olympics was every four years. You've got four years to think about it, and you've got four years to make a plan and change what didn't work at the last one. And, um, you know, obviously lottery funding came in as well in the mid-'90s and, and funded British sport. Um, so our sport got funded heavily, and we were able to have the best equipment and the, co and the facilities to train in. Manchester Velodrome opened... And um, it became a medal factory. And I, I was at the right age where I fell into that, 17. And, and so timing was a, was a big part of that for me. You know, I was uh, very fortunate that, that the money came into the sport when I was at the right age. That's probably the same with me, to be honest. Because, as I say, when I first started training, I just got shown a fight in the youthy. Mm. <laughs> so in the youth club one day, and Kyle Wilson banged this fight on, and it was Diego Sanchez versus Clay Guida. Yeah. And they just tried to kill each other for 15 minutes. I was like, this is sick, this. I when was the first time you watched a UFC fight? That would think that's the first time I can remember. Yeah. I can remember watching Forrest Griffin and Stephen Bonner and my mates like, at a party, like someone's christening when I was about yeah. 12. But I can remember, this is the one, first one I remember watching, Clay Greedo versus Diego Sanchez. And it was like fight of the year in like 2009 or something. Yeah. And they just had a brawl. And then I was like, I need to have a go with that. Yeah. And then a few weeks later, I stayed up one night and watched one live and it was in January 2010 and it was Belfort versus Franklin. Belfort knocked him out in like a minute and a half or something. I went for a run yeah. after the fight had finished at like five in the morning and then two weeks later I joined the gym, 20th of January 2010. So you were, you were into sport well before the Conor McGregor, which lots of oh, people, yeah, the yeah. influx of people that came into as sport. As I say, that's now. where yeah. I'm a bit lucky because as I say, I yeah. started training well before that. Yeah. Yeah. When it was just pure hardcores, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there was no like as they call it now, casuals. Yeah. It's just people who love the sport and yeah. that. And as I say, I, I started training when I was fifteen. I was like when I was going into school saying, Yeah, I'm starting to do an MMA. Yeah. People were like, What's that? They're like cage fighting. Yeah. When you're telling teachers and that teachers are like, Oh, stop doing that, you'll never get anywhere with that. You're too small, you yeah. need to focus yeah. on your schoolwork. And then as I say, I just got into it at the right time because I ended up 
having a few amateur fights, well, if I had an amateur fight won them all, and then I went pro when I was 17. And then I started fighting on Cage Warriors when I was 18, when McGregor was fighting on there. Yeah. I remember meeting McGregor before he had his first UFC fight at a, at a Cage Warriors. Yeah. But then obviously, as McGregor started getting huge in America, I was getting big in Cage Warriors. So it all coincided mm. well with the boom of MMA and people actually knowing what it is now. Yeah, like yeah. When I first started doing it, and I was like, to people, like, oh, yo, you fight, what you do? Like, I do MMA. It's like, what's that? Like, mm. do you know cage fighting? Like, oh, UFC. I'm like, yeah, yeah but it's not UFC. It's yeah. like saying you do Barclays Premier League. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just no, but that's that. the same. It, it's funny how, like, the boom, uh, lots of people, general public in this country, only know about the UFC, don't they? Yeah. Because people like, you know, Connor and yourself that transcended the sport, that it brought it to the wide audience. It's the same when they used to say I'm a cyclist. People say, was well, that like the tour? Have you ever done the Tour de France? Yeah. <laughs> because that's all people who are kind of new or associated with it. You know, so it's funny how there's, you, you know, both sports have had a boom where it became, you know, like almost like um, it became household names. You yeah. Know? And I think that was quite, we have, there's quite a similarity there. But uh, yeah, it's amazing when that does happen to your sport. But it's, uh, it's also kind of funny sometimes you have to feel like you have to tell people, no, but I was there well before. You yeah. know, I was there when no one was watching it. <laughs> you know? yeah. I started doing it when no one knew what it was. As I say, you yeah. have to explain to people, oh, it's cage fighting. Yeah. Is that I mean, when you're fighting pants, is it? Like, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. And like when I had my first fight, I yeah. was 16 and I fought him when he was 24. You know what yeah. I mean? It didn't, yeah, like, yeah. ages didn't matter. It was yeah. just weight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Weighed in. And like when I fought amateur, it was the proper amateur rules. You know what I mean? You could mm. you could do everything apart from elbow. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Do everything apart from elbow and like twisters and that spine locks and, and heel hooks. Now we can't knee to the head and do all of the stuff in amateur fights. But when I did like you could get kneed in the face. Yeah. So do you think it's worse for it now? It's more sanitized now, do you think the sport? Um no, because obviously that's amateur, it's safer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. People aren't getting kneed in the head because they are yeah. what knees to the head are what cause more mm. a lot of damage and elbows. Yeah. But if you wanna So that, that kick John Jones does to your knee. Oh that's legal yeah, that is, yeah, it is, yeah. Is it? yeah. It's legal. Because didn't he wreck Rampage's knee from it? Yeah, yeah still to he this did. Day. <laughs> I know I've always said and yeah. it's funny because I should have done this years ago when I was losing a fight, but I've always said, Lad, if I'm ever like losing a fight and two rounds down and I'm mm. definitely gonna lose, just shout from the corner, Gerard <laughs> and I'm just gonna two foot the front leg. You know what I mean? Like it might get hated on for it, but yeah. I'll win the fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I've snapped your leg in half. Legend. Makes you kick harder than anything. Yeah. Yeah, because so, then you know what they mean as well. Just two fuck this <laughs> cunts. You know what I mean? Go right through them. So obviously then talking about that, like saying there, but you were in it before, like the boom and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, at some point then, the attention starts coming, the fame starts coming. That's like a whole other added level of pressure. How do you cope with that sort of switch? Are you still, is the, the main focus still the competitiveness, still the, the fighting, still the actual job? But how do you, how are you finding that balance of like, obviously I, I what's, how old are you, Pod? I'm 29 That's now. a very similar age as I remember, like you starting to just get yeah. bigger and bigger and bigger and stuff. And I was like, I wonder how that affects the likes of the training and stuff like that. And then mm. obviously like with the Olympics and stuff, like yeah. you, there's so much going on. How do you kind of, keep that in check well, i found it really odd to be honest because it's funny I, I never did it for the fame and the celebrity so uh, but that happens overnight and you find yourself thrust into a different kind of light um and i don't think you realize it it just got creeps on you insidiously really so i i i'd worked up till i'd already won three olympic golds and was really well known in cycling circles but relatively unknown in the general public side and then my biggest success came in 2012 when we had a home Olympics, but I won the Tour de France 10 days before the Olympic Games. And I, I left home for the Tour de France. The Tour de France, three weeks long. I left home. I came back three weeks later and um, I was the most famous man in the country for a week. And then I won Olympic gold the week after in front of two million people at Hampton Court. And then I had the moments on the throne and things where I didn't know how to handle the press. So I was doing things which amplified it. Then I went out because I played guitar as well. I played on stage with Paul Weller and then I met Stone Roses and was playing guitar and that um so that kind of amplified my fame and then i was getting drunk at a lot of things so i didn't know i was quite introvert i, I didn't like know not compared to this like, this is <laughs> then i didn't know how to handle shit. i was quite I mean. introvert i didn't know how to handle success so i just sort of played the fool a little bit and then i won sports personality got knighted and it all happened in the space of three months and then i then my performances just went off the hill the following year i needed a year out almost i, I couldn't handle the 
this sort of monster I'd created through being an introvert and insecure and kind of not knowing how to handle fame. So I just played this kind of rock star character, which wasn't me, but it took away from what I was really good at, which was a sports performance. And it took me a long time to get back to that, really. And I think I, I, I impacted my own mental health from doing that, creating this perception of something different. And it's different in your sport because I think, you, you know, you kind of, um, it's a fighting game, but I, um, mine was just, I don't know, it was a, I still never really got over it now. I think it's a, it's a funny one. But then a lot of those character, uh, like the character traits were mine, but I just played up to them more and it was all to deflect from, from what I was really good at, really. And I don't know why I did that. I don't know. Yeah, that's a that's like a different level of fame, though. You know what I mean? Like people like say to me, oh, you're famous. That's like a different level of fame. You know what I mean? Winning an Olympic gold medal in the Tour de France and getting knighted and all that. That's a different level of fame. I get stuff for pictures all the time and that, obviously, but that is different. You know what I mean? But with me, I just... I just think I was made to do it. You know what I mean? I yeah. was I was built for this. Because when it first started happening, I was just used to it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, first yeah, you've got a real clear sense of identity and you know who you are. I think that comes from the environment you've grown up in, I think. See, I was quite sort of, I had a lot of imposter syndrome where I didn't really feel like I was worthy of the success I'd brought upon myself. And I think that stemmed from my childhood, really, and and, and I've been a sort of parentless um growing up you know kind of emotionally parentless mother and then a, a distant father as well um and so i was kind of i was a real incivic child and that's why i went into a sport that, w- that took me to be quite kind of individual yeah. so i used to go off on my bike all day for five six hours seven hours in my own head and it was just uh, it, and i think that was a very s- individual sport even though you ride in teams but you're in your head the whole time riding a bike and i think that lent itself to the kind of child i was it it sort of led me to sort of escape my traumas as well, if you were as a child um and it facilitated um es- having to address anything in my life really it was like a great distraction which then i have to address when i stopped at 36 but it was a great way of um not having to address all the things that had happened in your life in your childhood and stuff like that really and so it was uh it, the sport facilitated you know the kind of individual i was but you you've got a real strength sort of sense of who you are like you just said you know and i think that is um that's something I didn't have, and which is why the imposter syndrome crept in, and I really didn't feel like I was worthy of the success, and I didn't feel like I'd worked as hard as the other people that had achieved the same thing, and that's took me a long time to sort of come to back again, years of kind of looking after myself and, and understanding mental health, realise that that was I wrongly put that on myself. If you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, as you say, the <coughs> that's something that people always get misconstrued. I think with like MMA. As you say, they're an individual sport and a team sport. Yeah. People think MMA is just an individual sport. Obviously, when you get in there, you're on your own. Yeah. You've got to do it all yourself. Mm. But you wouldn't be able to get in there without your team. No. With no. Like the mo- months and the years leading up to it. Know what I mean? No. That's what I always say. People think that, yeah, it might just be me in there, but without all the people that I trained with before it and all the coaching I had before it, I wouldn't mm. like be as successful as I am. Yeah. Like yeah. You need all that. People just think, oh, it's just you. You could do it on your own. You could go to a different gym and do that and do this. But... You couldn't, you know yeah. what I mean? You've got to be comfortable in your own environment. And yeah. that that's the one thing that helps me a lot, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm very comfortable in my environment. Yeah. My city, you know what I mean? I'm from here. That's and it, yeah. I train here. I've trained in the same gym my whole life. I haven't ever went to a different gym and been coached by anyone else, apart from like when I went to different countries and that. I've always been trained by my coach, my with the same teammates in my gym, and mm. it just helps, you know what I mean? It's And I just... A big thing for your mental health as well. Yeah. Because when I, the worst times for me when it comes to my mental health, not when like I'm on top of the world, it's when I'm after you lose a fight yeah. or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're only as good as your last fight with MMA. Mm. And when you when you win, lad, everyone loves you. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and then you win, lad, everyone <laughs> fucking loves you, lad. It's mad. And then if you lose, or like, like I did, I had a close decision and people thought I lost. But after the fight, I said, no, I thought I won. Yeah. Lad, everyone just can just turn on you. Yeah. Like, the MMA fan base is very, very, very fickle, toxic. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's very yeah, fickle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Very toxic. So, lad, if you lose a fight, you just start getting all madness in your, in your, uh, in your inbox and all that. So, that's the, probably the most down I've ever been when I've actually lost a fight and then being injured or something. Like was that's that a new happened. experience for you then? So if that happened again, would you know you kind of, was that? Well, yeah, it ended up dead happening again last year, yeah. to be honest, because it happened, happened years ago when I fought for the Key Goyers World title and I had the submission locked in in the first round, but I'd had surgery like four months to the day before yeah. and I, I shouldn't have fought. 
everyone told me not to, but I felt like the show was riding on me. It wouldn't have happened without me, and I had mm. teammates fighting yeah, on yeah. it. So it was like, this show is going to fall apart without me, and I've got to do it. So I fought, and I had a choking in the first round, lad. And I don't know why we never went to sleep anyway, but if I had my other arm under, he would have went to sleep. But because that arm was so weak from the surgery, four yeah, months earlier, yeah. I couldn't finish it. Ended up going five rounds, losing a decision. And then I, in the second round, I punched him, I broke my hand again. So I had to sit out for months again, get more surgery. I'd lost the fight. Like that time, I went into the worst depression I've ever been in. You know what I mean? It was just waking up crying every morning. You know what mm. I mean? Just like, wow, what's going on here? Never ended up fighting that time for like another 15 months. So like, I'm sitting on that for like 15 mm. months, that whole time. The only time I ended up like feeling better was when I did eventually start speaking to people and telling people yeah. how I felt. Up until that point, I was just stuck in a rut. But as I say, it happened again last year, even though I won the fight against Jared Gordon. It was a close fight. Mm. People thought I'd lost. So, and I got injured again. <laughs> so I got injured, had a close fight. And then, as I say, I couldn't come back and just shut people up again. Yeah. I had to sit out for 12 months and get surgery and wait and wait. And how do you think, uh, you know, when you be obviously becoming a father looming, how, do you think that's going to change you as a fighter? How do you, have you um, thought about that much? Not yet, no. No. Um, but obviously, it's gonna. I think it's gonna give me another, another like level of motivation. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's gonna, yeah. it's gonna push me on to start training harder and yeah. hopefully sticking on a diet all year round and shit like yeah. that. So that, that's what I reckon will happen because I'm gonna start having a lot less sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to get used to it now. No, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it does. It changes people f sometimes. For me, as I got older. Um, I took less risks in cycling, so there's obviously a lot of crashes in cycling. It made me train harder, but I'd only take calculated risks when it was necessary to win something big. I wouldn't, all the stuff in between, I wouldn't, because, you know, Mark Cavendish, a good friend of mine, he's, he's, the amount of it crashes he's had, he's got glass shoulders from the amount of crashes he's had. He's got four kids, they sit and watch him on the telly crashing every week, and it's it's quite hard coming back, bust up and that, you know, and um, it's, uh, it's a sport like cycling, it changed me, I would say, for the worse, really. Um, but obviously your sport. No, I know exactly yeah. what you yeah. mean there. Obviously, there's when you've got no kids and there's a little gap there. You're thinking, yeah, yeah I'll go exactly, for that. Yeah. Know what I mean? But then when there's three yeah. kids sitting at home watching, you're yeah. thinking to yourself, shit, should I go for that gap or do I want to hate myself with them watching? But I, I don't reckon I'm gonna be fighting for that long. No. So at the point where they remember, I'm how long do you reckon you will fight for now? Twenty nine now. Know what I mean? Just not long turned. Um, be fighting till I'm about 35, 36, yeah. 37, but we'll see, you know what I mean? Because I've always said when I finish fighting, I'm probably going to go into Aspen or something. Do you think that Connor fight will ever happen? It's, you never know, it could yeah. do. We'll see if he ever even comes back, lad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he needs to fight Chandler first, doesn't he? So yeah. let him come back and fight Chandler. I, it, that fight needs to happen. They've done a season of the ultimate fight and all yeah, that. Yeah. But as I say, see what happens. Hopefully he comes back, lad, and he ends up beating Chandler and then fights someone else. Because I'd love to fight him. That'd it's be a, huge, wouldn't it? It's a It'd dream be... fight for everyone. Yeah, you know I, I mean, mean for, yeah. And I'm probably like the only other person that he could fight in, like an arena and a stadium and yeah, it'd exactly, sell out. Yeah, yeah. You could do it. You mm. could do Wembley. You could do what's the one in Ireland, Croke Park. Yeah. You could do one of them if I for Connor. And it'd sell out fast. Goodison, I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and any an actual stats, what I mean, though. Yeah. You, you, no one else he could fight. I don't reckon he'd sell no. a stadium out. No, that's it. But put do me versus him and you sell on the stadium, how's easy work? Sorry. Um, so you just mentioned then briefly about like obviously having kids and stuff and how it's going to change stuff like your diet all year round and stuff. Um, you you get held for your, for your diet after after a fight, don't you? Like absolutely more yeah. than anyone. It's like, it's ridiculous. But you doesn't seem to be a lot of talk of your diet during camps and stuff and you're always like in phenomenal shape and you're always making weight and like no problem and all that kind of stuff but there seems to be a bit of a an unfair balance there doesn't there like do you know what I mean so I just wanted to basically touch on your approach mm -hmm. to like nutrition generally is it is it a case of you know strict 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 and then when you can you blow out and do what you do what you want so he's both he's in both in that boat or he's some little bit my, more my nutrition is like when I'm in camp lad I'm I am strict you know what I mean I'm very <laughs> I add my calories up every day and that. You know what I mean? I make sure no I'm eating. I check my watch to see how many calories I've burnt, all that. You know what I mean? I make sure I'm in a calorie deficit every day so my weight's coming down every day. That's just what I do in camp, you know what I mean? And I never miss weight. 
that most of me, we most recent weight cuts lad ever since I moved up to lightweight, none of them have ever been big. I used to kill myself to make feather when I was younger and professional, but now lad, my weight cuts are all sound. I just like enjoying myself when I come out of it. It's just too easy to put food away, lad. But it is. I, I always say it's the worst thing ever. If it was as easy to lose weight as it was to put weight on, it'd be fucking sound. You know what I mean? <laughs> I literally just don't go to the gym for two weeks and eat what I want for two weeks. And I get on the scales, lad, and I'm 92 key. You know what I mean? And like, now nah, I got on, got on the scales yesterday. I was, I'm walking around now where, I haven't, where I'm injured, I haven't been training properly. Just walking around about 88 key. You know what I mean? And I don't really personally think that's that bad. But people are still call me a fat cunt. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't think 88 kilos is actually that bad on a 5 foot 70. You know what I mean? That That's nothing for me. I've done that in fucking like four weeks. Stupid weight cuts like that. You know what I mean? Get the brutal anti some of them. Some I had when I fought Julian and Rosie years ago, I was in a cave, pissed as a fart. I got a phone call. F- oh, are you fighting this Julian and Rosie in four weeks, aren't you? I don't know, am I? You know what I mean? Pissed as a fart, eating all monster munching that. Got on the scales, lad, on the Monday morning, I was 84 key. I had to weigh 65.8 in four weeks, three and a half weeks. In fact, what was it? In 24 days, because I was fighting on a, this was a Monday, I was fighting on a Friday, so I was weighing on a Thursday. So I had 24 days to lose, to go from 84 to 66, and I'd done it. How does that look? What, what does that look like? I look like I? a punter, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I look like I was on the swag for six weeks. But, like, that one was one of my worst weight cuts ever, to be honest. That one was bad. Like, never forget that. We were gone on the scales and we missed weight, so we had to, like, it had two hours to make weight. But, like, the way in the sauna where the weighing was, so we had to get a taxi. And I'm just in the back of the taxi. <laughs> and then, like, we get to this sauna. And then I got, and then we're getting in the sauna. I was just lying on the floor in the sauna and I, I didn't have the energy to move. So I was getting pulled in and out, in for 10 minutes, out for five, in for 10, out for five. And I can remember Vency turning to Paul and going, listen, if he dies, it's on you, it's not on me. It's <laughs> nothing to do with me if he dies. I don't want him to carry on doing this. I'll let him lose the belt and all that. Because if I miss weight, I lost the belt. You know what I mean? You don't make weight, you lose the belt and everything. But ended up making it. Got on the scales and that looking like a bag of bones. And then... I re- rehydrated and all that, and then the next day, like, I'd sit. Then she went to Costa, and I went round, or the Starbucks or something like that, and I went round with him, and I went, get some hot chocolate there. This is before we were getting on the minibus to go to the venue, so, like, four hours before I'm fighting, and I got a hot chocolate, and he told me not to, and I got a few of Ferrero Rocher from the Tesco Express, <laughs> and I had, had the pack of Ferrero Rocher and had this hot chocolate, and then after the fight, I absolutely gassed in the fight as well. Won the first two rounds, for the last two rounds, I was just like, <sighs> absolutely finished where I'd cut. Like, I think I'd done like 8.4 kilo overnight for that one. I lost that overnight. And then when I'm doing my interview in the cage after that, I'm giving one word answers. And if you watch that fight, that interview back, I don't give one word answers, lad. You know no. something's <laughs> going wrong. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah, it's sad. And then I just have to step back and vomit all over the cage. You've probably all seen it. But as I say, everyone thought after it that that was blood. But it wanes. It was just hot chocolate and Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> Rather it be blood than anything. Hot chocolate coming back up. Fucking hell. Oh, good. I, I was so stupid when I was younger, you know. Like, my man was an Olympian when I was spewing in the cage at that <laughs> age. You know what I mean? He was an Olympian at that age. I was still vomiting in the cage. and The cycling's quite different. I mean, I won the tour at 70 kilos. I'm 98 now. So I'm 30 kilos heavier now than when I was t- won the tour. And uh, I was 3% body fat for the tour. And once you're at that margin... Three? Yeah, once you're at that margin, you've got to last three weeks at that. You've got to, It's a fine line between whether you go ketonic and start burning muscle because you've got no body fat left because every kilo of body fat you have to carry up a one-hour mountain down the other side, it equates to about 30 minutes at the end of a three-week race. So it's all body to power to weight ratio in the tour. And um, it's a fine line. You, so many people overcook it and do too much and you start burning muscle and then you lose your top end power and it's just such a fine line so you know in terms of putting weight on people get to the end of the, it's a 10 month season so you get to the end of the month of the season and riders don't go and eat what they like and bulk up now because then you've got to work just as hard to get it off so riders now hover within one kilo of their race weight for the whole year which isn't healthy either no definitely it not. affects your hormones and everything like that um 
And, and the younger you do that, there's guys at 21 years of age that are now doing that. By the time they're in their 30s, riders are retiring now with um, you know, osteo mild osteoporosis and yeah. things like that because your bone density, one of the biggest things is bone density in cycling is um, crashing and you're breaking bones because it's a low-impact sport. So you're not, you're not putting that, that weight through the, the bones and stuff. So I understand what you mean with the hormone thing just because of yeah. Molly. There's no yeah. Molly's in fight camp That's and it. she's like dieting on that. Yeah. Like... Sometimes she she won't yeah. have a period for like two months because she's training that hard yeah. and she's dieting and like it just makes her cycle go all off. Yeah, it's mad. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so nutrition, you know, it's 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 the biggest marginal game now within cycling as an elite sport is is getting that nutrition right. Make sure you've got every little nutrient in your every calorie counted to the to the t. And um, protein's obviously the big one as well. So you know to keep that from going ketonic and burning protein, burning muscle. Um, but like the calorie deficit rides, we used to do, I used to do seven and a half hour calorie deficit rides um, where I'd consume two and a half thousand calories, but look to burn five thousand a day, um, and that was really hard because then you'd you'd shift a kilo and a half of fat in one day, but you'd be fucked for three days after it because you'd, the deficit you created, so you couldn't do too much work the day after, you couldn't eat too much the days after either. Yeah. You have to everything has to be just to make weight, you know, and, and then it's such a fine line. How many of those rides do you do before you turn up at the Tour de France? If you're one kilo over. You know, you blow up after two weeks because you're not consumed enough fuel the weeks before. It's such a fine line, and that's where the nutritionists come in and the, the nutrition sponsors and things like that. And that's like us with the weight cut. Like yeah. as I say, over the years, the weight cuts become a lot more scientific. And mm. as I said before, when I was 21 and I fought Julian Rosa like eight years ago, I done like 8.4 kilo overnight. Oh no, yeah, yeah. And they, they, I'd never ever do anything like that again. The most I do now is five kilo. Mm. You know what I mean? And I'm fighting at the weight above. Yeah. But I used to do ridiculous cuts, and back then a lot of people did because they didn't know the science be- behind it. People, the weight cutting in our sport come from wrestling, mm. high school wrestling, yeah, yeah, and that's how they make weight. They make weight mm. like that, and like the weight classes in the UFC, one seventy, one fifty five, one eighty five, they just and two oh five, they they just become the weights because the best fighters at the time when they had to bring weight yeah. classes in, they asked them what weight they wanted to fight at, and they said them weights. Oh, but it's yeah. also a miserable life. It makes you really unhappy oh, hovering mate. around oh. your, you know, your. That's why life. I say I'd rather be fat and happy, sometimes <laughs> yeah. a year. It is miserable. It's a miserable it existence. Is. Like being yeah. hundred percent on a diet all year round. I, I I I wish I could do it, but people say, "Oh, shows you haven't got the self discipline and all that." A lad, when I do a proper eight week diet and it's strict, that who hasn't got self discipline? Your sausage. Um. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, but I just like, I don't understand people who, especially you know, people who don't like um, not like um, <laughs> professional athletes like ourselves, like cyclists and runners and fighters and footy players. Mm. Like why why are you on a diet all year round? Have you seen John Jones at the moment? Yeah, <laughs> John Jones is a G. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's just enjoying life. Lad. He but looks he, well. Way, he's put his weight on around the middle. Yeah, isn't he? that's what I do. <laughs> know what I mean? John isn't getting much shit for this. Know what I mean? It's just because he's that good and he'll batty us all. I'll still batty us all. Know what I mean? I swear, that John Jones legs, doesn't get it. Wherever he like puts John his weight on his legs, legs, his legs, his calves, isn't it? He never puts them on his calves. Have you seen he? any of his brothers? Yeah, his brothers are massive brothers as well. brothers are NFL players and that. Super Bowl winners, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. Glad yeah. they're all they're just a family of yeah. specimens. Yeah. Know what I mean? I'd imagine what's in their sperm, lad. What the fuck? He's gonna breed super babies, lad. John Jones. Imagine him and Serena Williams had kids, lad. <laughs> wow. Scary thoughts. Um, so obviously, where you just mentioned then, mm. role of the dietitian and, and sponsors and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Because saying it's like restrictive and all that, but now look, I'm looking behind you there, and we've got cookies and everything, which you know we. Know. You oh, can't lad, be lad, the range. <laughs> <laughs> the lad, obviously, as we were saying there when. It must have been even worse when you was first coming through as a oh, cyclist. Yeah, like yeah. there must have been nothing when it come to like protein no, goodies and all stuff like that. I'm I'm obviously lucky where I'm f- like I'm still a nineties baby. Yeah. Like I'm not a I'm not a millennial, but lad nowadays yeah. the stuff what you can get when you're on a diet on a diet is ridiculous. The apply range, yeah. the amount of different mm. flavored cookies that you've mm. got. They've got more flavored cookies than Subway, lad. Well, yeah, now the, the, mad. Yeah, the breathe easy gels now. I was saying to Thomas back at the factory, if we'd had them when I was doing the Olympics time trial and that, it's like a, a cyclist dream that these yeah. breathe easy stuff. It's amazing. Did you get the, the, just, little, the little gels? Yeah, just I like how much see that's come I, on. At the incredible. match, when I'm, when I'm in yeah. Anfield watching the match, yeah. 
you always see them like that, and they're just getting them through with them. It's just like, yeah, I know exactly what you're up to there. Little car bit. I've been there. You know what I mean? Is it making it? E- does it make it easier though? Obviously, saying it's that like makes it. life ten times easier, lad. Obviously, all the diff- especially all the different flavor proteins as well. Yeah. And not long, a couple of weeks ago, me and me little mate in the in the gym. I'll say little mate, he's bigger than me, Ben, but he's only like 21, 22. He's got a big head like Jimmy Neutron, but he's he's a belter. Me and him had one of them cereal milk flavored whey proteins. Lad, it was heavy. I'm like, where did he even come up with these flavors? You know what I mean? Who just went? Yeah. Cereal milk will do good. You know what I mean? Who come up with that? What would you say then to any younger people who are probably just getting into this like now? Because nutrition can be something that that can be like the last mm. part of something that you look at. What kind of advice would you for them starting to get get ahead of the curve kind of thing? Like you know, is that anything that they should be doing? Should be looking at all the mistakes that you've made. I reckon Speak. it's the first thing for me now, and it, and it's so it's so accessible now. You know, we we're in Asda this morning just having a look around at the products and things, and it's just it's it's on your doorstep, and it's it's affordable as well. And um, it's for me, it's the biggest marginal gain. That's one of the biggest things in any sport now, elite sport, because it's the margins between the best in any sport now. It comes down, it's you know, so everyone's small, tra- yeah. it's so small, and it's, it, everyone's training in a very similar way now. Everyone's ahead of the game in certain areas, but the nutrition for me now is is where the you know if you get that right and have the discipline to get it right, um, it is and it's so accessible now as well. Like I say, you know, you still have to hunt for this stuff now, and it's it's as normal a diet now as you can have with the flavors and things like that. 20 years ago, you know, you were you were still sticking whey casein now, you know, milk, you know, powdered milk into into water bottles just to get the, you know, the whey the pro- the out of it. I think it, like, plays a big part as well, like, with it being such a, like, these types of sports being so intense, particularly for young people, young young lads as well, it can be such a big taxing thing on, on, on your mind, on your mental health, restricting yourself as well from stuff or even overindulging and stuff when, yeah. you, when you probably shouldn't. Can be I'm such a, a fucking b- king at that. Like, <laughs> you know, like that is just me personified, lad. I can't help but overindulge. Just fat, sweaty little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but it happens, though, doesn't it? Probably. Like, you've got to kind of have that balance, haven't you? As you say, like you it's, do. It's it's something that you've just got to kind of be aware of, haven't you? I suppose. We can't all be PTs. You know what I mean? PTs can stick on a diet all year round. I just can't. Like I'm, I'm probably the opposite to to Brad there, as he said. I probably went diet last. That was the last thing that I looked at when it comes to everything. You know what I mean? I done every everything else first. Trained all the time. Got punched in the head loads. Yeah, but I think people. that's probably the key to your sport, though. Yeah, is it getting that bit right. Like even first? like <laughs> even like running and all that. I, just, I was cycling and running. Like I haven't got a proper road cycling bike. Because lots of people in gyms look like UFC fighters, but they probably can't. Oh yeah, bag. exactly. So that's that's, that you, is what it's that's like. the bit you got to get right first. Yeah. Like lad, that's what's hilarious with me. Yeah. I only started lifting weights four years ago. To be honest, like twenty five. Mm. And when I first walked into doing weights with me S and C coach Paul yeah, Reed, yeah, yeah. When I first, went, oh lads, it's quite embarrassing to admit this, but it's funny at the same time. So I don't give a flying fuck. When I first went in, and I, I think I was twenty five, I, I was a former world champion. My record was like 17 and 3, something stupid like that. And I went in there and I couldn't bench the, the bar. Because my wrist, no, that's what I said about my wrist yeah. before, my wrist for that week. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't bench press the bar. I had like, I went like that to do it. And Paul had to grab the bar. Yeah. You know what I mean? That is how girly my arms were. You know what I mean? I was terrible. I couldn't lift weights, lad. And like now, like, if you look at my body from when I fought, I had, like, my last couple of cage warriors fights, and that was when I first started lifting weights to my last fight. I look like a different person. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and that's literally through lifting weights and doing the other mm. side of things properly, because yeah. I just used to I just used to go in the gym and fight. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. Didn't even really think about my yeah. diet. When I was younger and I was fighting amateur, as we were saying, we didn't have all this. Mm. You know what I mean? Didn't have all these different drinks. Yeah. And back then, I think I used to just have eggs of a morning, chicken and rice in for me dinner and chicken and veg for me tea yeah because i don't like fish either when you started doing all that did you think of this like the end result that you're going to be you know like we watched that mcgregor film when he said he knew where he was heading in terms of like he was going to be the biggest name in the sport but did you do it just because you enjoyed doing it loved doing it and then realized you were good at it at some point or did you start with a like a that's hilarious because even before i ever had my first mma fight i did say i'm going to be in the ufc yeah yeah and it's funny because I've <laughs> so you knew what you were this doing, is another thing you shouldn't really admit yeah. on camera know what I mean, but 
Ah, uh, it's one of them. When I was before I even first started, yeah. before I first started training, I made a YouTube account doing UFC prediction videos. Is that still up? No. <laughs> <laughs> I told one of my mates about it in school, Doddy, and Doddy told everyone, and I just had to delete them all because I was getting fucking terrorized. <laughs> You know what it's like <laughs> in school, lad. You know what I mean? I was in year 11, got the back yeah. ripped out of me. But um, it's funny because, as you just said, then it reminded, like, I found this fella, another fella used to do videos yeah. on there, and lad, I found him on Instagram. He was commenting, yeah. like, something about me. So I, I followed him on my account and started speaking to him. And he DM'd me saying, Oh, I can remember when you was a kid and you was on YouTube doing your videos yeah. and you were saying on your videos, I'm going to be in the UFC. And I'm this and that, and like it's the Eva's message me saying it's unbelievable to see you now yeah, in the UFC yeah. saying doing what you said you were gonna do before. Like I hadn't even had a fight yet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just always it's mad. Always growing up, I always said I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna yeah. be something. I'm not gonna be no one. You know what I mean? And mm. it ended up happening. A bit mad, isn't it? It's fast though. Yeah. I just say that to people like. Don't ever think you can't do something. Mm. You know what I mean? Like people like ninety nine percent of people could be anything they want, but they quit along the way. You know what I mean? Yeah. As long as you don't quit doing what you want to do, like you can go wherever you want. We're in the one percent that actually believed in ourselves and done it. Mm. Probably zero point one percent, not even one percent. You know what I mean? Most people some people get in the red along the way. Like I could have done that. One of my teachers, I'll never forget the teacher saying it to me. I got Nick selling in school. I'll never forget it. She, this teacher liked me, so she, instead of putting me in isolation, she put me in her office. Yeah. I can remember sitting there, and like she come in, I was like, "Oh, what are you doing this for, Patrick?" And all that. I was like, "Oh, I'm just selling to get money in to pay for me gym, sixty quid a month." And she's like, "What do you mean?" I was like, "Oh, I'll do LMA this and that, blah blah." And she turned around and went to me, "Oh, you need to stop doing that, Patrick. You're far too small. You'll never get anywhere with that." The teacher said that to mm. me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like these teachers are meant to be people that are inspire you yeah, and yeah, it's true. drive you forward mm. and like say good things. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. This teacher basically told me to swear at MMA and just focus on my school work. Mm. Mm. Imagine I would have done that. You know what I mean? But like You'd have been a nutritionist, mate. <laughs> be in jail now. <laughs> so I don't even know what I'd be. I'd probably be a bricky or something stupid like that, you know what I mean? <laughs> Working on site all day, hating my life. Yeah. And that's why I always say to people, just if you want to do something, you can do it. Just do it. As Nike say, just do it. It's not what life. Just obviously. So we've we've met years ago, and um, I was just saying to Dave before that quickly we uh, we started filming Molly when she was doing a Cage Warriors title fight. Yeah, yeah. Used to come in the gym and film her. You know, like all the YouTube stuff. Yeah, yeah. And we've got footage of you there, which we we tried to pull up before we couldn't get it up, but um. The relentlessness there still, like from then to now, it's still there. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like coming in, you were like that, this big character in the gym, but still putting the graft in, and it's still there today as well. Do you know what I mean? So it just goes like, and to be fair, like even talking about most of us, like because we were doing videos at the time on YouTube, pushing ourselves out there, and everyone was like, "What are you doing that for? What are you doing?" Yeah. And now I'm here doing a podcast with like you. Do you know what I mean? And the same sort of thing applies if you just keep pushing yourself for that, it'll it'll come. I'd I wish I still would have been doing them YouTube videos. I'd be sick if I was doing them for 15 years and then ended up in the <laughs> UFC. Just like, got these going back for years. But I let getting like bullied over it in school for a yeah. month to make me delete them all and never do it again. You yeah. know what I mean? That's why I always just say to kids now, lad, if you want to do something, just do it. Don't ever let some sausage from down the road put you off doing something that you want to do. You know what I mean? I said I was going to be in the UFC. I'm in the UFC. My man said he was going to be an Olympic gold medalist. He's an Olympic gold medalist. Can do what you set your mind to. So, what's your current training looking like at the minute then for both years? I know I think I caught before that. Yeah, and at the minute, I'm not yeah. doing like at the minute, what I'm doing is going in the gym, to tr- doing bits of pads with Alice, make kicks. I've got, I've got tears in both shoulders, so I'm rehabbing them at the minute, just letting them rest. i um, hopefully be able to start training properly again the next couple of weeks. But my bird's pregnant, so I've got to have these kids see what the first couple of weeks is like, see what the sleep pa- sleeping pattern's like, see if I can get a fight soon. Because I do want to fight. I want to try and fight twice before the end of the year. Like, I only fight, fought once last year. Does my head and all that. Don't want to fight once this year. Fight twice at least. So hopefully I can come back 
summer or just after the summer and then happy days but at the minute i'm like just running just doing lower body stuff weights rehab on my shoulders uh, running loads of kick and stuff just letting the shoulders rest at the minute so no one can either <laughs> yeah i mean I'm, I'm boxing four or five days a week at the moment uh, i've started learning the last year now it's been a year with a view to maybe doing a white collar event or one of these youtube fights i don't know they offered me to do one last year but it's such a such a tough intricate sport just having to learn a new sport like that where you I don't realize the amount involved in it i don't know if i can actually ever get into the final thing and get in the ring with someone but i love the the, the routine of it it's been great for my mental health keeping me um give me something to focus on and replace that void that cycling left because i never really replaced that but yeah i love it it's uh, it's one of the one of the best things i've ever done really from that point of view so i'm just doing everything around that at the moment really i'm trying to train full time for it because i kind of do one i either do something full in or not half but um and then balance everything else around it so it's uh it's been great at the moment it's kept me on the straight and narrow yeah routine is yeah. it that's a, as you say massive, there really. routine's massive yeah. when it comes to anything yeah. when it comes to diet a profession anything routine is like I feel when I'm in fight camp, my, my routine's impeccable. You know what I mean? Every day, I don't, I don't forget to take my fish oils, my vitamins, my ZMAs every night. You know what I mean? All my, my little things that I take, all my vitamin A, B, C, all that. I don't forget to take none of it in camp. As soon as I finish fighting, lad, like I've had my yeah. fight, I, I forget to take everything, lad. Applied nutrition sex bomb. Yeah, all of that. <laughs> I forget to take it all, lad. You know what I mean? I, I'm slacking. And it does me head in. All yeah. me digestive enzymes and all of that. I just... I, yeah, yeah. Routine's massive. Massive. Mm. But as we were saying before, staying in a routine, three, three six, soon and 65 days a, yeah. a year is just torture. Can you find that? Like, obviously, t- saying there, like, coming out of it and then you forget. How easy is it for you to, s- to switch off after, like, a fight? Switch off from the routine, switch off from like the all that kind of stuff. Easy, is it? Yeah, yeah. you find it easy, don't you? Yeah, you I can find see it that. fucking easy, lad. <laughs> it's sad. I just switch right off. It, mm. <laughs> it's, it's sad for me, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna lie. Once I finished finish my fight, I have to sit right, get on, go back, get a shower, sit round, go and do interviews, chill, and then you get in the, in the car back to the venue. I mean, back to your hotel. As soon as I get out of that, that car outside the hotel, I spark a joint and then chill, go to my room, and then I'll go and get food. That's what I've done last time when I got an In-N-Out burger. It's a bit annoying, like, because I've got to keep my hat on. I had cornrows, didn't I? I, yeah. didn't have to hold, so yeah. I had to keep my hat on in there, and that's yeah. how people didn't get on me. <laughs> we had to get a taxi to one about 20 minutes away as well, so we weren't getting cased. But as I say, I just go back to being a normal kid from Eighton. When, mm. I, when I fought, I just go back to being, I'm always me, like, but me and camp, lad, I'm a regimented, I'm like a, pro, I'm proper in regiment, know what I mean? Like, everything's on a timetable. I do everything when I'm supposed to do it. Like, if I miss a session, it does me head in. Yeah. Even when my coach has said to me, you're a bit tired today, have a chill, chill mm. for a bit. It's like, oh. I haven't burned enough calories there, I'm not yeah. going to be able to eat as much later. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when I'm out of camp, lad, I'm just like fat bastard off Austin Powers. Is it, sim- is it similar for you? I think more obviously when, when you won like Tour de France no. and then a couple of weeks later the, the Olympic gold. Mm. Um, and it's like, you is that like pretty much everything you can achieve in such a short yeah. space of time? And then how do you go from that? Like, Well, I found it often? quite easy to switch off as, it, as like Paddy said, but... um. The problem then comes, especially if you've been successful, is everyone wants a bit of your time wherever you go. And you're trying to be normal and do the normal things you did before you left. It became, you know, you had the success. But you, you can't be normal anymore in the sense that you can't go to the normal things because people are like, what are you doing here? Why are you in Tesco's? You know, it's like... And, yeah, um, that is one of the weirdest ones And ever. that's the hard thing is when you're trying to do your normal things and switch off, but people are still treating you in a different way to how they did before you left. Uh, when you're in like just a normal yeah. place, as you say, like a supermarket. Yeah, what are you doing in here? Like, what are you doing here? It's like Same thing as you. What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a funny one, isn't it? It's someone said to you, I yeah. didn't think I'd see you here. It's like, I'm going to be somewhere, aren't I? Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Got to be somewhere. So, like, yeah. why can't I be here seeing you? 
They people, some of the shit people come out with to me is mad. Yeah, yeah, it must be like I think um, was it Tyson Fury said something like when he fought Klitschko, he, that was in his head was like the pinnacle of what he what yeah. he wanted to achieve, and then that was the point of his downward spiral. Because yeah. he was like, yeah, probably didn't feel like it. He thought it would feel. Yeah, yeah, and he was like, he's mm. kind of reaching. It's like, what, what do we yeah. do now? And then yeah. that just went completely the opposite, like peak to yeah. like the opposite way, which was like mm. horrible to see. And then mm. see people like obviously like you said before, like people. Yeah, the, you're up when you're up, but then when you're down, yeah. people are kicking when you're down. Like, ah, uh, like, is is that does that do you reckon that just comes with the the competitive side of things? Is that in you? That and you just got to keep that in check. Do you think? <sighs> yeah, it's probably just in you. Like I am, I am very competitive when it comes to aim. I'm, I am quite bad. I can admit it. You know what I mean? Whether we're having a game of keepy ups, or we're playing FIFA, or anything like that, lad, I want to win. You know what I mean? Whether we're playing Kirby against me 10-year-old ten, ten nephew, I want to win. And that's just in me. I don't know if you're probably the same. Yeah, I'm not so much that. I think I think that the problem for me came always when, um, you, you know, you talk about before the routine. If you've had a structure of routine for something for so long, whether it's four years, three years, eight months, whatever your lead-in time is, and then the day that that's done and you your whole life's been mapped out from day to day, you know exactly where you're going to be in a week's time, you know exactly where you're going to eat tomorrow morning, and then you're left to your own devices and you're switching off, but the world's treating you differently yeah. and you don't know when your next thing's going to be. And I think that, that was a hard period. And that's kind of something like Tyson Fury and that. It's like, what do you do next? You know, And that routine is the biggest thing for lots of professional athletes, I think, is keeping that that order in your life and something to get out of bed and do every day. And once you start drifting that, the longer you drift, the longer it is, the harder it is to get back. I think it must have been a lot harder for you, though, as yeah. you say, because we're it's, but not thinking about it now. It's obviously my fight camps are they're not easy, they're hard, but compared to what you were doing, because you're doing like a full four year camp, basically. Yeah. Leading up yeah. to the Olympics, you're doing like a full four year camp, where I'm doing like an eight to ten week camp, you know what I mean? I know we're probably burning my body into the ground in them yeah. ten weeks, but you're doing that over the course of four years. Yeah, but what you have to do at the end of it, I, don't yeah. know, I, don't I think that's a lot different, isn't it? It's See, like, you'd probably, yeah, d- you'd definitely rather do a mountain climb on a bike yeah, I wouldn't change when I'd definitely you, no. rather fight fight a big <laughs> I fella, you know what yeah. I mean, than do a mountain climb on a bike, lad. Yeah. Because like, pff, them uphill rides are rough, rough. I'd definitely, I'd rather have it with John Jones than do the Tour de France <laughs> on me, <laughs> defo. Because even if he batters me, lad, it's over in two minutes, you know what I mean? That Tour de France takes three weeks, fuck that. Yeah. Legs are in bits. I had to get leg kicked and a bleed kicked by John Jones multiple times. <laughs> Defo, I'd snap me kneecap in half and not doing that. <laughs> so, in your respective sports, then where do you sort of see the future of them going? And how do you see your own involvement in them as well? Because obviously, you're always going to be associated and all that kind yeah. of stuff. So. I don't know, really. I, I think, I mean, cycling seems to be, certainly in this country, we've got more and more champions. It's just snowballed now, really. And, you know, that. The success of sort of my generation inspired a new generation who was inspiring another generation and it's although it's a, a really sort of it's a it's a, um, a popular hobby for lots of people in this country the elite side is just as strong really but it, it's whether it can sustain itself or not as well you know there's always going to be a dip at some point but it's it's brutal at the same time as well elite it's the, the more elite it's got it's filtered down the categories now so you go to a junior race you know at, at uh, Aintree or something on a Sunday morning that the equipment that kids have got now so it's harder to entry into the sport now as well you know the money needed so the more elite it's got at the top end the harder the entry level is now as well in terms of finance and stuff so it's it's, it's, it's eliminate a lot of people as well um so it's, it's really hard really i don't know it's, it's going to explode at some point um because you're not getting the, in, the the people coming at the bottom end because of the expense it costs to get into that now but at the same time it's televised 24 7 on any channel there's always a race on at some point on eurosport or whatever but um, Th- that's where the sport, our sports, really are complete opposites. Yeah, because anyone you can literally go and have an MMA fight if you want without any trainer. Mm. You really could. You could turn up at a show and say, "Is anyone need a fight?" And you could get a fight. You know what I mean? Where and then you can just walk into a gym and start training, and they can get you a fight. You know what I mean? You, you don't have to have any credentials. You don't have to have any sort of oh yeah i've got this to say that i can fight you can just yeah see if you're 16 you need five or ten yeah. grand to start cycling that's what i mean that's yeah. where the complete opposites like and i a parent in. that will drive you around the country to yeah. the races yeah like so. that's like where like that i consider sports mm. like tennis and golf and yeah. similar like exactly, that yeah like one of your mates was a very good tennis player but then he had a few injuries and fell out the rankings and couldn't end up doing anything yeah. with it 
you know what I mean? You've got to like be staying the same yeah. rankings, haven't you, to do well in them sports. Where when it comes to MMA, as I say, I just started training when I was 15. People mm. always say to me, Oh, when did you start? Did you start doing Jiu Jitsu when you were six and stuff like that? I'm like, yeah. Nah, just walked into next gym when I was 15. Started fighting when I was 16, went pro when I was 17. And I was just lucky that my sport had a boom in the time that I was being a rising star in it. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. With you, though, like, I, when I think of cycling, I think of you and Chris Hoy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's that's all I think of when I think yeah. of cycling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are the two people what come to mind straight yeah. away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you're the same at UFC for most people in this country, isn't it? You and Conor McGregor. Yeah, th- hopefully it is now. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's what I aspire to do, inspire the next yeah. generation of kids to come through and mm. fight. You know what I mean? Well, that was going to be my next question, actually, obviously, because what comes with it is the massive platform. So, like, are we going to... Do you plan to keep using it for the, for the better, like, to inspire people to, like, you know... Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, like, anyone who's in our, in our boots who's got a little bit of a platform, you should be trying to motivate and inspire people to be better well, people I think anyway. You just, I think you do that by just being who you are. Yeah, that's... I, think, I don't think you have to try. No. Nope. And I think that's the biggest sort of message you get sense of kids as well, is just by... It's the authenticity that comes with you. Yeah. I think that's the easiest thing to be. It is the easiest yeah. thing to be, is yeah. yourself. So it always makes me laugh when people's like, oh, he's putting on an act. It's like, yeah, man. <laughs> Get round to ours. <laughs> Come and see me, and you'll see if I'm putting on an act. <laughs> but obviously, like, with that, though, because obviously you, n- notorious for that big, um, the speech at the end of, uh, of your fight. Yeah. Like, well, you know, that's such a massive thing, because that, that boom in men's mental health, young people's mental health now is... is peak and like you know which is great like so obviously it's great to see people with a platform pushing that all the time it's mm. probably might not have been as big on socials and all that probably yeah. like you know during like yeah, 2012 yeah. that kind yeah. of thing so it as i say when people mention that to me it's just i don't feel like i've done anything special i just felt like i said what needed to be said mm. that's the way i look at it you know what i mean and people are always like oh you've done so well so i'm just like lad anyone who's in my position should say that there's loads of famous people and people who've got well more followers than me and are well more important than me that should say stuff like this, but don't because they're selfish cunts. You know what I mean? Mm. I just done it because it's bad in Liverpool, lad. Like, I remember when I was younger, when I was about like 19, 20, something like that, someone, Glenn killed himself and then it just started happening more regularly over the years and then obviously that when that happened with Ricky, I just couldn't believe it. And then... <sighs> I just felt like I had to say something, you know what I mean? Mm. And it was crazy, because the next day when I'm looking at my phone, like, mad cats like Jennifer Garner, and that is sharing me on their story. Like, wow, what's going on here? You know what I mean? I only said what I felt like needed to be said. You know what I mean? I didn't... But that's, it's, as I say, it's just, it's crazy, because, lad, when I said that, that was the best thing since sliced bread. You know what I mean? Everyone loved me. Everyone wanted the slice. You know what I mean? It was the Paddy the Baddy show. When I was just being me, but a four or five months later, I had a clo- won a close decision and said a few things in interviews people didn't like, and I was the biggest piece of shit on the planet, lad. You know what I mean? I was proper turned on, like fucking Beckham after the 98 World Cup, whatever it was, lad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Started just getting terrorised every day, getting told to kill myself and that on my comments. Just like, what? Six months ago, we just were all saying how good it was that I said this and that. And now six months later, I've literally got like similar people telling me to go and kill myself. It's just the, the world we live in is just, it's a crazy place, lad. You've got such a good attitude towards that though. Like obviously, it's, it's on my list there, so obviously I bring it up. You have people like the Paul brothers, like who are constantly pushing different things and setting people up. And like, you know, if they use it for the complete opposite, I think their platform. Yeah, they're a pair of cunts, lad, that's why. Well, one That's of the questions, funny enough, was if one of them, one of them wants you to straighten her, doesn't he? So, uh, I'd, I'd fight him, lad. I'd love to fight him. I'd love to have, a, I'd be funny if I'd, I'd love to have him like a, not even an MMA fight, just a, a striking fight. You know what I mean? Like a Muay Thai fight, kickboxing fight. And just kick him that many times that he can't walk again. He has to learn to walk again. I think like Jake, a baby. Jake called out Sean Strickland, didn't he? I think something like they that. all just talk shit, lad. You know what I mean? They're all a gang of helmets. Logan Paul even mentions me, lad, and he's got about 40k on me. You know what I mean? He fucking, it's like a heavyweight or something. Yeah, and he keeps mentioning me and shit. It's like, lad, what are you on about? You know what I mean? He's fucking huge. 
They're all well bigger than me. You know what I mean? Like fights at 70. I think they box at like 83 key or something. Walk around about that. But as I say, as as my man mentioned them oblique kicks by John Jones before, lad, I will <laughs> end Jake Paul's <laughs> kneecap with one of them. You know what I mean? I'm t- I'll just tear every ligaments he's got. ACL, LCL, MCL. You'll have to go and buy three new ligaments. This is why maybe you don't get into YouTube boxing, but you need to see it before. No, no, no. <laughs> I can remember going to the um, I was going to see the lads in the Daisy, and we ended up in the Sefton, the same night the Logan Paul Dylan Danis one was on, and I, we just ended up in the Sefton. Lad on the telly, there was a tag team boxing match, and I was like, "What's this?" Like I was raging at the fact they're just making a mockery of fucking sports. You know what I mean? Mm. Oh, I couldn't believe it. Tag team boxing match. Oh, I don't even want to speak about it. Giving them publicity just burns me head out for all the gang of fucking dickheads. It was, but who was that one that Sean Stickland battered the other day in the PI? Yeah, that, I saw that. Who yeah. was that? Sneaker. Him, yeah. yeah, boss that. You know what I mean? Boss. Mm. Wanted to get in there and spar with him. Stickland put it on him. Yeah, so. Sound. You know what I mean? And then that was why Jake Paul started talking shite, weren't it? Imagine what Sean Stickland would do to Jake Paul. Seriously. Mm. He's had some beef with that um, that Machine Gun Kelly as well, isn't he? Ah, uh, yeah, it's lad. Yeah. Stickland's funny as fuck, lad. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's hilarious. Met, met him in the PI in December. He's fucking funny as fuck. Mm. It's just, he's the same. He's like me. Yeah. What you see is what you get. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's just, that's him. You know what I mean? Mm. He's no different when, whether he's, there's a camera there or whether there isn't a camera there. He's just the same person. Yeah. And that's why I proper like him. Yeah. He co- he does come out with some proper stupid shit. You know what I mean? But so, he's funny. Mm. It's hard work seeing, like, obviously I know, like, the, the the beef that people have and all that, and the clout chasing all between fighters is like, you know, that's good to see. Like, yeah. I'm in sales of fights, like, I love all that. But then it's hard to see when you see, like, YouTubers trying to do it and it's yeah. like you just see through it straight away. But mm. obviously someone you've had in the past is um idiot supported, haven't you? Like yeah, you know, yeah. obviously he's just won, hasn't just he? Just won so the belt lad, yeah. <laughs> Lucky little cunt. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my questions was, obviously, would you would, would consider Yeah, of course. It, yeah. The funniest thing about support you lad is well, hand sanitizer. I was gonna say I've got some yeah. from that. The funniest but. thing about hand sanitizer boy is lad. He always always mentions me in interviews. It's like lad. You're fighting for the featherweight belt. Talk about your opponents. Focus on that. That he still mentions me in every interview. You don't catch me talking about him because he's a sausage. Oh, well, a chirito. You know what I mean? You don't catch me talking about him because I'm not asked. He's fighting at the weight below. Good on him. He's just won the belt. You know what I mean? That's off to him, lad. He's just beat one of the best featherweights of all time. Can't can't take nothing away from him. Good on him. But. He wouldn't have beat him if Islam did an egg kick him four months ago, you know? For me, Tapori is a little piece of shit because he, um, he's a Valencia fan, you know? Is he? He's a Valencia fan. And Madrid had him out on the pitch the other yeah. day. <clears throat> That's like United asking me to come out at half time and kick a ball at Old Trafford. You get told to eat shit. You know what I mean? So it just shows what a little piece of shit he is. Imagine going to a rival club's team, lad, and doing that just for some publicity. I'd rather have me models, you know what I mean? And that's what I've got, lad. I've got I've got me models that I'll never break. Fair enough, fair. Actually, one of the questions on, on United, actually, was, um, obviously, you work a lot with, with Dave Rails, but haven't you? Yeah. Um, see, Manchester, um, just been, say, what is it, 25%, was it? 25%, 30, isn't it? Was it 25, it is, it? Yeah, which the reckon is going to bring, like, th- yeah. 300 million to the club. Like, yeah. what's, your, what's your thoughts on that? I don't know. I mean, he's, he's amazing where he's come from. You know, he ran British Cycling and Team Sky, and now he's Man United. But he's aligned himself with Jim Radcliffe there. Obviously, they run in your sport. And I don't know. Yeah, I think there's probably some things you can probably take from a man management. Dave's really good at man management and getting people in to do the jobs, the right jobs, and rather than doing it himself. And um, it's a business at the end of the day, isn't it? Um, and from what we hear, that club has never been run from the business end downwards which is why it's effective but i don't know if it is that the case but um Fuck, sure. they earn more money than any other club though, yeah. don't they mad. I don't know, it's mad they earn more money than anyone it's so don't it's just them glazers obviously can't run a club yeah. and it's simple as that but i love to see it like i, I hate man united 
I absolutely despise the cunts. I hate them, lad. They ruined my childhood growing up. I fucking hate them, lad. They did. Ru- absolutely ruined my childhood growing up, lad. Won everything. You know what I mean? Beat us to multiple leagues. Got Gerard winning the league. I fucking hate United. Hate Sir Alex Ferguson. Respect the, the balls out of him. Unbelievable manager. Possibly the best ever, but... Well, second best or third best behind Paisley and that. But... I fucking hate him, lad. <laughs> I fucking hate him. The day he retired, I was over the moon. I was like, yeah, oh, that this is good. And then they haven't won fuck all since early, yeah, happy. So just, just keep it that way. You know what I mean? We just Did you hate him then? <laughs> I hate them, lad. I, have, I, I, still, I still hate them more than City. City just Tim Pot Club, aren't yeah. You know what I mean? Half of the fans were Stockport fans 10 years ago. Yeah. So you don't really care about City. United have actually got a proper history. They're a real team. You know what I mean? Got three Champions Leagues. They've got twenty leagues. They're a proper team. Yeah, it remains to be seen whether he does a job or not. I think it's going to take another five, six years, isn't it? It's, it's a ten-year cycle, isn't it, for a team like that? I mean, how long Jurgen's been doing there? Nearly ten years now. Look at the job he's done. But you've got to be a specialist, Jurgen, to come in and so do that. I mean, literally about to say they need someone like Jurgen yeah, to come in. And yeah. Some sort of special offer, on it. So that, that's yeah. an arg, man. Yeah. Funny, <laughs> funny guy. Him. Some of the shit he comes out with in interviews doesn't half make me laugh, you yeah. know. He's a proper helmet, him. Sand, so, uh, obviously, sort of round up here, but we're at two, month, three, two months in to 2024 now, so what can we expect from the both of you kind of career-wise, personally, this year? Obviously, you've got some big life changes Yeah, I've got on. F- twins on route, lad. You know what I mean? Um, see, see how much they, these baby girls disrupt me life. I don't know what it's like here. You know what I mean? I've, I haven't got any kids. I've got a fucking dog and that's hard enough. You know what I mean? Lenny fucking does me head in enough, lad. But, you know, I'm going to have to get on with it. And as I say, I want to have at least two fights this year. At least. Because I've done me head in last year, only having one fight. One fight in a year is not good, lad. I need to have at least two. So I'm hoping to have two in quick succession. I want to punch Renato Moicano's head in. To be honest, lad, he keeps talking pony. You know, a mushroom. It's money, my car, no. Shut up, you beaut. You know what I mean? He owes me money. I'll never forget years ago, I had him in a fucking accumulator, in a parlay, as the Yanks say, and he got fucking knocked out by Jose Aldo. He let me down for like eight son. So with interest, you owe me a nicker. My car, no, you know. <sighs> anyway, yeah. I want to beat him up and then have a quick turn around and beat someone else for the end of the year. That would be ideal. Sand? Yeah, for me, I'm just, um, it's nice to be back with a... Um you know, a leading sports nutrition company in applied nutrition. I'm working a lot with the endurance range this year, um, helping develop products and push that range really. And um, Olympic year as well. So I hope to be, well, we'll be broadcasting with what, a network for the Olympics. Um, and um, yeah, just I'm doing, continuing to do my theatre talks around the country to mostly men um, in their 40s that come to watch me because that was my sort of fan demographic. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but it's nice, you know, because lots of men struggle in their 40s and um, cycling has been a particularly the success I had for some reason. It inspired lots of men in their sort of mid-30s to get on their bike and change their lives, really. So it's, um, I, have to ex- I sort of accept that now. And it's, uh, it's nice that it was uh, the success meant something to so many people from that point of view that it really changed their lives. I believe, to be honest, lad, my, dad done, my dad's done a couple of bike rides yeah. for Marie Curie. And it's probably because of people like yourself that they yeah. got popular and started doing them. You know what I mean? Like... What ones they do? We want he done one from one side of Ireland to the other, um, yeah. London to Paris, yeah, and the Grand Canyon to Times Square. And my dad just done them jumping off the couch, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's hilarious, lad. When I spoke to the people who we done it with, it probably benefited his life, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, that, in a big way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because my dad smokes about forty ciggies a day, and when he's drinking pints, lad, he'll drink about twelve of them a day. Yeah, yeah. but. He done these. <laughs> he done these bike rides. It's quite funny, really. Shouldn't even re- shouldn't laugh, but it is quite funny because when he's doing these bike rides, he's doing them for Marie Curie. Yeah. And he's doing these rides and like he's stopping <laughs> for a fag every. <laughs> the fella, the fella who he done the bike rides with, Ray, who lives around the corner from ours. He th- he said, "I've never seen nothing like it, lads." It's like when we but every every like pit stop, we would pull in. Everyone would be like, "Oh, where's the water? Getting water." Your dad would find the pub and buy a pint and go outside and smoke <laughs> like five fifters, <laughs> drinking a pint and then jump back on the bike. Uh, <laughs> He'd done that every ride and he was raising money money for Marie Curie. Yeah, like, it's great. 
But as I say, without people like yourself yeah. making cycling oh, popular, yeah. people probably wouldn't have even thought to do them rides to raise funds for stuff like yeah, cancer no, and that. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's lovely. It is lovely. It's lovely. Like to that, see and it. you see, yeah. you even see that with MMA now. Like, yeah. that, there's like white collar MMA events yeah. now yeah. where people raise money for like sick kids or like cancer well, there's a building around the back here when we came in here there's a martial arts place around the back here yeah well yeah. As it's as i say a lot yeah. of people like that a lot of people use that to yeah. have an experience of fighting as well that's it, there's yeah. a lot of people yeah. like oh, i want to i want to have a fight but well jake quickenden there's a guy jake quickenden who just fought that uh, yeah he fought paul smith yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah paul, 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 paul got battered in it didn't yeah he? He did. because jake's always in shape yeah, anyway he is, he's yeah. really fair because He's cut. Did you see yeah. his cut? Jake's always in shape where <laughs> yeah. Paul's got like a dad bod on. You know <laughs> yes, what I mean? Yeah. Paul and he's just, a comedian. You can't, yeah. you can't take him seriously. There's no like, you can't have that sort of... Where he's always, up. like Jake's always yeah. looking healthier, yeah, looking he's, ripped yeah. in. He's yeah. always in shape. That's it. You know, yeah. I saw that one coming. But I was meant to be at that show, to be honest, yeah. that octagon. But my yeah. mate was, uh, who was meant to be fighting on it. The fight never ended up happening. But yeah, I was meant to, it was meant to be at that show. Yeah. But I, I did get told by a couple of people, Paul... Got his ass handed to him, and I felt that's felt it. terrible for him. Yeah, it was hard. Poor bastard. Mm. But that's what I mean. That's the thing yeah. with this sport, lad. Like, Can't that's why people want to do like the no. white collar stuff because you wear red guards, shin guards. You know what I mean? Yeah. As I said earlier, when I first started fighting amateur, you just had yeah seven or eight ounce gloves on, no shinies. You could head kick each other and knee each other in the face, and that the only thing you couldn't do was elbow and yeah. twist and leg locks like heel hooks, like. And now people love doing stuff like the white collar for an experience into it. And the great thing about that is it raises funds for charity and mm. stuff like that. When the people who do the shows aren't on the bump. Yeah, looking at you. Yeah. Do you reckon there's any, any scope in the near future to maybe swap sports? Maybe you get in, get in the gym there. Well, be, you're more than welcome to get in the gym anytime you want, lad. You know that. But uh, my dad always tells me to get on get on the cycling. You know what I mean? Obviously, mm. it's brilliant for your cardio. Like, I like running and that. And I've got a bike. But it's a mountain bike and it's got an engine in. You know yeah, what I mean? It's yeah, a it's a lefty yeah. bike. I haven't got a I haven't got a, um, a skinny wheeled cycle bike. And my dad rips me for it. My dad's like, "That's not fucking cycling, lad. Get a fucking <laughs> real bike. You'll fucking <laughs> use your legs." That he fucking gives me hell over it, lad. Yeah. Well, who knows? We'll see. We'll see. I'm not doing the fucking Tour de France. Like fuck that. I'm yeah. Doing anything like that. I'm not doing nothing along them levels. Do you use a what bike in training, so? Did you ever use the what bike? Yes, yeah, yeah, I do use yeah, the what bike. Yeah. I was actually using, as I say, because me, I haven't been using up, no, doing me upper body no, at all. No. The past couple of weeks, when I've been going to SNT, I've been finishing on the what bike, yeah. doing like um, ten seconds and then twenty, uh, 20 seconds rest, yeah. Ten, yeah. non-stop. Know what I mean? And if by the end of it, when you get off the bike, you're like, don't know. <laughs> like pay for that. He's just been up, yeah. You know what I mean? He's just legs are like jelly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I would. I'd, I would get get on the yeah. bike, defo. Even Very you'd nice. smoke me, like. You know what I mean? But, Not anymore. Yeah, Not defo. Anymore, no. I, like my. That's what I mean. Like my body is half built for fighting. I'm a weirdo. I'm mm. proper weird. My body's not. It's not like probably meant to do anything. Like I couldn't be a professional athlete in any other sport. I don't reckon. It's just because I'm like me muscle mass and like me bendiness all help. Yeah, like yeah. everything goes together. It doesn't at the same time because we're like I'm hyper mobile. I've had to have all surgeries everywhere yeah, yeah. on my wrists and then one ankle. I know for a fact in the next five or ten years when I have to have surgery on that ankle just to complete the set. Yeah. I, I'm not, I know I am, lad. I've got scars there, 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 there. And on this foot, lad, I've got a big massive one up here. Yeah. And then a big massive one up there. And one a little one in the middle. And like that's the only foot now, the only part, corner, what needs doing on my body now is this one, lad. You know what I mean? So it's going to happen at some point. Defo. Oh. Sand. Nothing there then, yeah? 